Hey everybody, welcome back to my Subaru for a final thought and discussion on God and politics. It is November 3rd, 2020, and my wife and I have voted, uh, but more than voting, I have been praying many times throughout the day that God would bless this nation, that God's people would humble themselves, and that we, as God's people, would never forget where our loyalties ultimately lie. I got an email from one of my mentors and friends uh, who sent out uh, an email to many, many of his friends uh, and people who follow him and the ministry that he leads called Theodicy. And I wanted to read a portion of that uh, email to you. Um, he takes an excerpt from an old C.S. Lewis um, book called The Screwtape Letters, which is really uh, an illustration or a story or a metaphor about evil in this world and the influence of Satan and demonic forces on people. And after reading a passage from there, he says, note the progression. And this is, this is how Satan wants to deceive God's people. First, politics is part of religion. Then politics is the most important part of religion. And then religion becomes part of politics. It's absolutely genius from an evil perspective. But let me read what C.S. Lewis uh, goes on and says. He says, to be clear, he never advises that Christians ought to be abandoning political engagement or political causes. C.S. Lewis does, however, warn just how easily the enemy can use political engagement to confuse what are ends and what are means. When it comes to politics, especially the high stakes kind that defines the current climate, American Christians have a history of losing the story in the chaos of the moment. America is worth protecting and preserving, and Christians should always side with what is good, even if flawed. We have much to steward, including the historic recognition of God-given rights, a system of government designed to protect those rights, a constitution that prioritizes our allegiance to God over any allegiance to the state and a history of men and women God has used within the framework of that freedom to spark revival, to confront our national sins, to secure civil rights, to found Christian institutions, and to send missionaries around the world. However, if, as we uh, rightly acknowledge the ways in which America has been a blessing for the church, we can never confuse one for the, uh, one for the other. It is the church whose future is secure. It is to the head of the church that our allegiance ultimately and exclusively belongs. The kingdom of God is the end of all human history. It, and only it, can ever claim our highest loyalties. Reflecting on our loyalties is more tempting than we often care to admit in a context in which more and more of daily life is politicized a reality that simultaneously reveals deep flaws in our current social order and elevates the stakes of each subsequent election. Whenever and wherever political realities invade spaces that properly belong to family, to community, to friendship, to religion, Americans should push back. For the Christian, however, the stakes are even higher. We have embraced Christ, who offers more than personal salvation. He offers a kingdom that will have no end. He is not less than our personal Savior, but He is certainly more. He is the King. His throne is not threatened or vulnerable. Loyalties, Lewis understood, are not lost in grand ways. Politics claims them in more subtle ways, as Uncle Screwtape wrote. Once you have made the world an end, and faith as a means, you have almost won your man, and it makes very little difference what kind of worldly end he is pursuing, provided that meetings, pamphlets, policies, movements, causes, and crusades matter more to him than prayers and sacraments and charity. 
he is ours, screw tape says. Chuck Colson famously said that salvation will never come on Air Force One. Neither will, for that matter, the Antichrist. The rule and reign of Jesus Christ does not stand or fail or fall on this or any election. Rather, we see this moment, even this political moment, that holds so much consequence for our nation. In light of what is ultimately true, Christ is risen, Christ is Lord, Christ is making all things new. And so by all means, we ought to labor and canvas and advocate and persuade to the best of our ability. We ought want the true and good to win the day on Tuesday, that is today. But we will not serve this moment or any righteous cause well unless we keep certain things straight. We must not confuse the end with means. We must not confuse the king of heaven and earth with the princes of this world. We must not confuse the potential of politics with the hope of the resurrection of Jesus. God bless you guys, and I want to close in prayer and pray for our country. Heavenly Father, thank you for this country that we were all so blessed to be born in and to live in. And I pray for our country, God. I pray for our community. I pray for our city. That, God, you would allow righteousness to reign. That you would allow us to live in peace. And that we would put aside the petty politics and put people first. And that, God, we would all be able to live, whether we agree or disagree, we would all be able to live in peace. And that we, as your followers, those who claim to be Christ followers, God, that we would be a people that rise above the fray and we would seek to love everyone and to bring edification to the lives of everyone that we encounter. And we pray these things in your precious and powerful and eternal name. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. And I hope that on this election day, however things turn out, that you will experience the peace of God that outweighs and is beyond reason and it will guard your hearts and guard your minds in Christ Jesus.